Hi, this is Dr. Ram from Ed Madness. We are going to see about the pathogenesis of pericardial effusion in this session. Let me begin this lecture with a brief note on the pericardium. So this is the pericardial sac and this contains pericardial fluid. And this sac is lined by a serous layer of pericardium. And this sac is covered up by fibrous pericardium here. During development of heart, the heart invaginates into this sac like this and gets its covering. This is the pericardium. Peri means around, around the heart. It has two layers. One is the visceral layer. The other is a parietal layer. The visceral layer becomes the epicardium of a heart. And the parietal layer is composed of fibrous pericardium on the top with the underlying serous pericardium. In between the serous pericardium, pericardial cavity is present and this cavity contains the fluid. Let's see a schematic representation of a pericardium histology. Here I put up the myocardial cells here and this is the myocardium of a heart. Overlying the myocardium, you can see the epicardium. So this is the epicardium of a heart. Also, this epicardium is the visceral layer of the pericardium. So this is the visceral layer of a pericardium. And here is the parietal layer of the pericardium. In between the parietal and the visceral layer, you have the cavity which is filled with pericardial fluid. So this is the serous pericardium and this is also the serous pericardium and here is the fibrous pericardium. In between the serous pericardium you have the pericardial cavity and this is containing the fluid which is less than 50 milliliters. This is the normal fluid present in the cavity. Here are the mesothelial cells. They are squamous cells, I mean flat cells. And they are going to secrete or absorb the pericardial fluid. Underlying these flat cells, you have the connective tissues. You have the collagen and elastic fibers. You have the blood vessels. And the connective tissue cells like the fibroblast, macrophages or neutrophils and so on. Here I put some fat cells here. Okay, now what is pericardial effusion? So, under 50 milliliters is a normal fluid that is present in the cavity, am I right? If the fluid accumulates here to more than 50 milliliters, this is pericardial effusion. Like this. Now a question that comes to your mind, how does the fluid accumulate? In order to keep this simple, I will show you another picture. Let's discuss some basics here. So this is the blood vessel. The fluid in the blood vessel exert a pressure which is the hydrostatic pressure. There is one more important pressure in the blood vessel that is exerted by the proteins. This is the oncotic pressure. What happens if there is increased hydrostatic pressure in the blood vessels? This is going to put the fluid out of a blood vessel, am I right? For example, say congestive cardiac failure. So congestive cardiac failure, there is an obstruction to the blood flow. And this back pressure created increases the hydrostatic pressure and this puts the fluid out of a blood vessels. And number two, what happens if you lose your proteins from the blood vessels? Like this, there is decreased oncotic pressure here. This is also going to put the fluid out of a blood vessels. Like this. So the decreased oncotic pressure. And number three, a very important cause for pericardial effusion is the inflammation. So the inflammation that is happening in any system is going to dilate the blood vessels that is going to put the fluid as well as the proteins out of the blood vessels. What is the role of lymph vessels in any system? 
So the little proteins and the fluid that is filtered out is going to taken up by the lymph vessels and this lymph vessel is going to put back those little proteins and the fluid back into the circulation. What happens if this lymph vessels are blocked by some tumor or say any infections? Again the fluid is going to get built up. Lymph obstruction. So remember this picture you can easily get all the causes for the pericardial effusion. Let me put back this point to the histology image. So here are the blood vessels. What happens if there is increased hydrostatic pressure like in a congestive cardiac failure or decreased oncotic pressure here like in cirrhosis of liver? The fluid is going to come out of a blood vessels and gets accumulated here causing effusion. And a third point inflammation is very important I want to discuss this in a separate video we call it as pericarditis. Itis means inflammation. Just imagine these pericardial layers are inflamed. This may cause effusion. There are a lot of causes for pericarditis. Say for example an infectious cause like bacteria, virus, fungus or non-infectious causes like trauma, malignancy or say autoimmune diseases like rheumatic fever. We'll discuss all this in the next video. Just practice this histology picture. You will get all the pathology very easily. And see you then. Thank you for watching Med Madness.